lightning pace speed. Some of us have it, some of us don't. And while speed is something you can absolutely practice and improve, it's also heavily relying on your genetics. And if you're not the fastest guy on the planet, in this episode I'm going through a few things slow players like yourself can do with and without the ball to look and definitely play faster than they actually are in order to survive when playing against faster opponents. And by the way, I want to make it very clear that by no means am I trying to mock the players mentioned in this video. In fact, this is a testament to those guys to show you how even the slow players out there can succeed in top-level football. And as a fun starting point, the thing I really want you to think about is how can you eliminate the speed of your opponent to make him, in a way, come down to your level? You obviously can't just expect them to all of a sudden turn slow. But what can you do on the pitch to successfully strip away their speed and not give them the advantage of pace? Well, number one. Be in charge of the tempo. Let me explain. As a slow player, the last thing you want to do is get exposed and put yourself in a situation where you take on your opponent in a long sprint where both of you just run full speed in a straight line. Because you'll obviously get beaten by the faster player. Now, with that in mind, when you have the ball, you want to avoid letting your defender reach his maximum speed and outpace you. And instead, you want to be in charge of the defender's pace as much as possible. Oftentimes, this can be a achieved by dribbling with the ball in a zigzag-like motion and constantly changing your pace to make sure the faster defender has to stay on his toes, adjust his run and not be able to reach his full speed. Tons of players like Mesut Özil, David Silva, Nemanja Matic and especially Andres Iniesta have all mastered the art of rhythm and tempo and can indeed beat players even though they're not fast at all. Take Iniesta for example. He's able to constantly change the tempo when dribbling. He starts off fast, all of a sudden slows down and then takes off again to not give the advantage of pace to his opponent. And oftentimes he's not running in a straight line but changes direction a lot to prevent the defenders from reaching too much speed. Remember, we want to eliminate the speed of your faster opponent. And a smart way of doing that is learning how to dictate the tempo and moving unpredictably on the pitch. On the contrary, fast guys like Leroy Sané can simply focus on reaching top speeds as often as possible. But you, as a slower player, need to approach this in a different way and disarm the opponents from speed. So stay away from running in a straight line and be in charge of the tempo. Number 2. Positioning and timing. This is the so-called off the ball section. And here I'm talking about being in the right place at the right time, anticipating the next move and always trying to stay one step ahead of your faster opponent. Now, if you were fast, obviously you could get to the end of a through ball purely based on your speed. But the slower players have to, once again, use different tactics and positioning will ultimately help you give the advantage over far more faster players than yourself. Let's stop right here and look at Thomas Müller. He spots Ribéry with the ball and with a perfectly timed run, he's two steps clear of the defender and then it's already too late. Here, the slowest player on the pitch, David Silva, times his run well and with the help of some horrific defending, he's all alone in the box. The point is, in football, being one two steps ahead makes a huge difference. And as a slow player, this is something you'll have to excel at in order to beat fast guys. Now, positioning and timing are crucial everywhere on the pitch and it doesn't have to involve you trying to get into goal scoring positions. For example, the midfield is packed with players who are not fast at all. It's more important to be fast in your mind than, than with your legs. But with great timing, positioning and anticipation, you can create more space for yourself, intercept passes in front of far more rapid guys than yourself. Honestly, you can apply this to almost anything. But unfortunately, timing and positioning are not things a simple 4-minute YouTube video can fully teach you. It's about understanding and reading the game better than the others. But luckily, just you knowing this is something you need to work on will give you some advantage over tons of other people out there. And as a last tip, you want to choose your role wisely. If you're self-aware enough to know that speed is not your biggest strength, perhaps it's not the best idea to fight for a spot as a winger in a system where you are expected to be lightning fast in counter-attack situations. Yes, Raheem Sterling might be your favorite player, but if you haven't got the pace, maybe you're better suited in a role of a midfielder and can make up for your lack of pace with other attributes. But regardless, as a quick recap, if you're slow, the reality is you won't turn into 
into a speed monster overnight. So in order to beat faster opponents, you wanna do everything in your power to remove the advantage of speed from your opponents. You can do that with the ball by actively being in charge of the tempo, adjusting your pace to keep defenders on their toes and changing directions when dribbling to avoid getting into a sprint with your opponent. Without the ball, try to anticipate the next move and aim to be one step ahead of your opponent. Remember, it's not always the fastest guy who gets there first, it's usually the smartest one. And with those words, it's time to end today's short episode. If you want to learn some exercises you can do to improve your speed, check out one of the two episodes down below on your screen. Smash the like button if you learned something new, and with those words, I'm out.